Good afternoon, Trader Tim here from eminimine.com. I'm doing a market analysis video for the eMini S&P. Uh, today is the 10th of June. Uh, markets haven't quite closed yet. Uh, we've got another two hours or so, but I um, wanted to talk about a couple of trades from today as well as uh, kind of the swing trade setup that I'm looking for this week. So as you can see on the daily chart on the left, a uh, pretty clean, uh, strong break of the 61.8 of the short to the downside. Uh, now, there, there wasn't really an actionable setup here. When I'm looking to take a swing trade on a daily chart, I'm actually looking for a break of the low price of the highest bar in the rally. So if you look on the way up here, all the way from lows, every single day, not only have we made a new high, but we have not broken the prior day's low. And so when I'm looking to take a swing trade, rather than just uh, aggressively short into a rising market, I like to wait for a break of the low price of the highest bar. So currently, uh, you know, today's candle has not closed, but let's pretend that the low of the day uh, is uh, 28.80 then tomorrow if we break today's low that's where i would look to initiate my short otherwise you know the market just kind of can keep on uh, melting up or drifting up without um, any real momentum change to the downside and so i'd rather wait for a little bit of more confirmation by letting that price break the prior day's low. So that's what I'll be looking for tomorrow. Uh, if you're trading the underlying, like if you're just going to use the SPY, you can use the high price for the day. So let's just pretend today's high price is 29.06 and today's low price is 28.80. Then I would use that, uh, put my stop above 29.06 and then my entry would just be, you know, five, 10 cents below if you're using the SPY. Uh, below the low. Uh, you could also use like the DIA or the uh, IWM or the Qs. Uh, but what I'm looking for is a pullback now to, you know, 20, 2800 might be a little bit of a stretch since we're all the way up here at 2900. But uh, 2850 would be reasonable. You know, we have some support back here. Uh, the 50% is down to 2817 and a quarter using the, the current high from today. So, you know, somewhere in the 40, 50 point range of a pullback is what I'd be looking for. Um, I bought some longer term or I added to some of my longer term positions down here on the gap up. What ends up happening, you know, if you're contributing monthly to a retirement account, if you're, if you're still, you know, below that, uh, 59 and a half here uh, in the US um, and you're still contributing to your retirement trying to grow your net worth you know you you contribute monthly you grow your cash basis and then after you you know a couple weeks or a couple of months go by and uh, you build up another you know a couple of thousand dollars perhaps then you know using these opportunities to add where we're sort of we've been in the downtrend and we gap up at lows that's a really good opportunity to uh, put in a uh, you know addition to your long positions you can also initiate a brand new position and I didn't do that in this case like I could have just bought the SPY here and then wrote it up and then when we broke the low of the high bar sold it and just closed out but with you know obviously with compound interest and and uh, dividends and things like that um, I have uh, the particular funds that I use they do have a dividend coming out in June so purchasing you know adding to a long-term position ahead of the earnings which with cash that's kind of been accumulating as on this downtrend where I really didn't uh, make any additions uh, at this point here in the last couple of months it just makes for a nice opportunity to get into a little bit lower risk entry point um, at the end of the day it's not the most critical um, 
you know, we're talking like a couple percent difference if you, uh, you know, kind of add at a more opportune time, perhaps just ahead of an of a uh, dividend that's coming out. But, uh, you know, a couple percent year over year over year it can certainly add up. So that's how I kind of play some of the swing trading stuff, looking to add to a longer term position and then uh, put on a short not necessarily selling out of a longer term position up here, but putting on a hedge, a short term hedge, so I could ride that down. So I'm, you know, essentially my profits that, that have accrued on the way up here for the long term stuff are eroding away a little bit. You put on the hedge, you gain some profit on the downside, you sell out of that, and then uh, as the market returns higher, you you know you're still capitalizing in the long-term position now with a strong move up like this one thing I am gonna be watching out for is a little bit more of a bull flag so we may only pull back to like you know 2860 we could get a hammer in here or uh, two or three days or even a full week of sort of sideways action so as I look to take a short here I'll put my stop above the swing high and um, if the market starts to move lower, you can split your stop up into two parts, if you will. You could leave, like if you, have, if you had 100 shares, you could have 50 of those shares just leave your stop a little more conservatively above the swing high. And then the other 50, you could tighten it if you wanted to, to bring it above each candle's high. Uh, and that way, if we do chop around a little bit versus just going straight down to the next 50, uh, you still uh, get to capitalize on at least half of the position. So that's a that's a, a trick that I'll use uh, at times. Uh, let's get into today's trade. And like I said, the markets aren't fully closed yet, but we'll talk about some of the stuff from this morning. Um, another gap up, and if you notice on these gap ups, uh, we do have an unfilled close down here but otherwise all of these gap ups we kind of gapped up came down and uh, traded at the prior days uh, close and then rallied same thing here uh, we've got a little bit of a gap uh, from Friday to Thursday and then currently there's a little bit of a gap from today to Friday uh, that may close here at the end of the day uh, if we end up with an inverted hammer great if we end up rallying Again, I'm just waiting for a break of the prior day's low to use that as my short entry. But intraday, I thought it was a, a decent morning. If we come in here, I've got the high and the low of the first 30 minutes marked. And there was a nice little double bottom down here. Uh, the first thing I noticed uh, prior to that in the first 15 minutes, if I drew lows to highs, the very first halfway back, it had you know a one candle reaction but then it failed so I'm always drawing the first setup up not putting a limit order not trading it just to see what happens at that level and then I come in I can draw the next setup which would be a short since the long failed and there was a nice little double bottom here uh, it wasn't the low of the day but it was just a little double bottom setup uh, we broke the swing high and we didn't touch the short yet so I ended up taking that one here at 2891 um, I actually used 50 um, probably should have gone up to let's see wait a minute here go back to my notes no 20 uh, 289175. Yeah, rounding up 91.38 was the 50%, and then rounding up 250, and then adding a tick. And so that gives me the uh, 28.91.75. I had drawn the setup up here. That was originally uh, just as my notes, um, as I was looking through my notes here. I had originally drawn the setup like this, um, and so then you have a 91.22 by rounding up to a quarter and then adding a tick. That gives you the 28.91.50, but um, it, it wasn't, there wasn't really a lot here. Other than we did break the swing high, this would have been a valid setup, um, 
but it was kind of early in the day and I just uh, wanted to get a little bit more, um, I guess, confirmation or, you know, it's early in a Monday morning. And so sometimes I kind of slow play into the day. So seeing this double bottom form and then break the swing high and not touch the halfway back short yet, that gave me the, uh, the confidence to take the, uh, the 91.75 up here. And then uh, that ended up breaking the short. Uh, I drew up the next retracement, trailed that 61.8, yeah man, like so. And then drew up the next retracement, trailed that 61.8, and you can see that's where I got taken out up here at 93.50s. Um, nice little trade for a couple of points. Then we came to the full halfway back here. And at that point, you know, I'm watching up here at highs for some sort of a potential top, but I'm also drawing, so you can see we went from the 50% right to the negative 23. So the next thing I do is draw up the next 50% retracement. And um, this one, things got, uh, so we broke the 61.8 here. We traded down to a uh, 94, uh, let, let's see here, traded down to a 94 even. So it was barely a tick break of the 61.8. And I like to see a little bit more than just one tick. It's nice to get a, at least a two tick break. And if you were to use the lows from this double bottom to highs, we were pretty close to that halfway back. So I really, and we didn't really have a, a high tick here either at uh, seven tens. So we made a high tick at uh, 701, which was uh, back here in this area. So we didn't really have a high tick. We were kind of in between the halfway back. So I did not like the short right here. If we had a high tick at at uh, what at the time, which was uh, if we would have had a high tick at the time at highs, I uh, would have had a little bit more uh, maybe desire to take the short. But because we almost stopped at the long and we didn't have the high tick and we had just traded right to its negative 23% target really cleanly. You know, we went 50 to negative 23. Um, I just kind of let that one go. Uh, then drawing from the, the lows up to highs, we had a uh, little bit of a consolidation up here. Again, didn't get a, a new high tick at highs and we came down and traded basically again at the uh, the halfway back long so I drew up the next long and I was looking to take the 50% up here uh, but this one did let's see 52 I think it was a 53 let me double check here 53, it wasn't the high tick of the day, but it was a higher tick. Um, so we had this little double top. This is actually where I was looking for a short, but see how I draw up the next long setup from low to high, and we touch the long 28.96.75s before we bounce up and touch the short. So I ended up having to pass on that short because the long had traded first. It wasn't the cleanest double top either. We kind of undulated around a little bit here versus just dipping making a little u and coming back up so i didn't feel too bad about that but then on the next halfway back i just went ahead and took it right at the 50 percent at 28 uh 99 evens because at that point this was like the third one that we traded nicely up to the target pulled back to the 50 you know we, we Tested it three times, but barely traded in. It was pretty clean. So seeing that we had this support to the left, these highs as support to the left, uh, just you know, drawing up the next setup, it's pretty small, and just using the uh, the 99s uh, worked for a nice setup. You could have also waited and then taken the very next setup, 99.50s. That would have been fine too. Um, you could have taken the very next setup, which was like a 93 and a quarter. So any of those setups would have been fine. And, uh, and then just managing that trade, I just trailed the uh, swing lows 
so I trailed underneath the swing low here. We started to rip pretty pretty quickly straight up. Um, I did come in here and, and tighten my stop with uh, a couple of contracts, and you can see where we dip below the prior candle. So in here, I was just trailing each candle's low until we broke the prior candle, which was up here. Uh, you'll notice this candle here broke its prior candles low, but the highs line up. So if we don't make a new high, I just leave my stop alone. So my stop was here. The next candle didn't make a new high. I just left it alone. So when this candle came down, my stop was still uh, below it. And um, so then a portion got taken off here. Then I drew up the next 50% retracement, which happened to line up nicely with this swing low and I just put my stop under there uh, 2903.75 and that's where I got taken out of uh, that trade and then that was kind of the so far that's been the the highs of the day um, going into what do we got the last hour and a half or so here um, I usually don't take any trades into the close but uh, just kind of looking where we're at, 28.88 we came down to, 28.87-ish. So kind of uh, towards, let's see, did that make a new, what's the exact low here? We came down to an 86.75. So um, breaking below the first 30-minute range again and then now coming back into it. I wouldn't be surprised if we close with an inverted hammer, but it, you can't really make any uh, do much analysis in the daily bars until they're completely closed. So tomorrow I'll be watching for a break of today's low. If we just continue the trend and gap up, then there's nothing to do on the short side. And if we do start to pull back, I'll be looking at the halfway back, which is down at 28, we'll call it 28, uh, 1750s is where I'm sort of targeting, somewhere in this range, 2820 to 2840. I'm a little bit of a pullback, but from there, you know, certainly could uh, could make new highs here in the next, uh, even the next couple of weeks. So uh, intraday, things are looking a lot better. Swing trading, uh, a couple of opportunities. If you want to check out the live trading, you can do that tomorrow morning on Tuesday. Just uh, head over to eminimind.com slash VIP. And thanks for watching. Everyone have a great week.